now we're going to have a look at similar kind of ideas going back to vectors again, OK? okay. So you may have remembered we sort of started off looking at some things with forces, and then we changed it to vectors. Now we did some more stuff with acceleration, and now we're going to come back to looking at this with vectors. So I've said here we're now going back to motion in two dimensions because of the fact that we've got i and j, which corresponds to the x direction and the y direction. Sometimes it corresponds to east and north. You can just imagine what that looks like on a compass. So we'll be using vectors to deal with this because we know that you can deal with the i parts and the j parts separately when you look at vector calculations. So I've written here that in chapter 8, we saw that many physical quantities could have both direction and ma magnitude, and therefore they could be represented as a vector. So just as a reminder, these things can be represented as a vector. Forces, acceleration, velocity, displacement. But the ones that are scalar only are things like mass, area, volume, time. Okay, these are some of the things that are scalar. So because acceleration can be a vector, it means that we can also change some of our equations to become vector equations. So I've said this naturally means that f equals ma works with vectors too. Now, it's not necessarily clear here, but our normal equation is f equals ma. Our vector equation is f equals ma. Why have I not underlined the m? It's scalar, OK? The mass is not a vector quantity, whereas the force is and the acceleration is. This force that I'm talking about here, what does it actually mean? It doesn't mean force, does it? It means something a little bit more detailed than that. It means the resultant force, OK? Just a quick reminder, if I have three forces and they're all vectors, how do I find the resultant force? What do you do? What's the process you do to find the resultant force of vectors? Have a look back through the pages. You've got it on the previous pages. See if you can find it. What do you do with vector forces to find their resultant force, their overall force? Amina, you got it? No, no, not if they're written as column vectors already. You just add them together, OK? You should remember that from these previous slides that we've got somewhere about here. You can find the resultant of two or more forces given as vectors by adding the vectors, OK? So we're just going to be reminding ourselves of these things because they all build on top of each other. Here, it's the resultant force. So those are going to be the forces added together. So it says here, let I represent east and j north. In other words, usually we say that i is x and that j is y, but now we've just got it as east and north, north, east, south, west, like the compass. Okay. A resultant force of 3i plus 8j newtons acts upon a particle of mass 0.5 kilograms. Find the acceleration of the particle in the form pi plus qj meters per second squared. Find the magnitude and bearing of the acceleration of this particle. So it's kind of like a bird's eye view of what we're thinking about in this thing. We've got a particular particle and we're saying it's got a force that is moving it 3 to the east direction and 8 in the north direction. So roughly, what direction will it be moving in if you described it as a compass direction? Northeast, yeah? It's going a little bit to the north, a little bit to the east. It's not going to be going perfectly northeast, but it's going to be going somewhere in between them. So for part A, we know that F equals MA. So the resultant force is 3, 8. The mass is 0 0.5, and the acceleration is the thing that we don't know. So what could I do to both sides of the equation to find out what the acceleration is? I could just double it, right? This is saying half of the acceleration. So if I multiply this by 2, if I multiply this side by 2 as well, I get that the acceleration is 2 times 3, 8. So the acceleration is 6, 16, which they have asked very clearly for it to be written like this. So I'm just going to change it back and just call it 6i plus 
j, just so I make it exactly how they wanted it to be, like this, OK? Yeah, I, don't, I think I just left it on there. I don't think you drank it. <laughs> no, I've already drunk half of it already, so. So nothing really that's new there. Just using the same formula, but this time using it with vectors. And then part B, I mean, we've done this a million times now. But I'm still going to do it anyway, OK? <coughs> Find the magnitude and bearing of the acceleration of the particle. So first of all, if I want to find the magnitude of the acceleration, in other words, I'm going to take the magnitude of the acceleration vector. Anyone could remind me, so I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask Locke, tell me how I find the magnitude of this. It, and then you square root them added together. That's going to be our magnitude. That comes from Pythagoras, of course. So the magnitude of our acceleration is now, what's that? Which is 2 root 73, which is 17.1 meters per second squared to three significant figures. And then it wants us to find the bearing. What's the best thing to do for, a, to, for us to answer this kind of thing first? We've got to draw it. OK, so it's going to start from here. And it says it's going 6 across and 16 up. Look, there it is going in exactly the direction that we thought it would be going in. So that's the direction of it. And a bearing is measured between the vector and the north line. Noticing I'm doing it from the same starting point. So the angle that we're looking for is this angle here, which is the same as this angle here, because it is alternate angles, OK? Z angles, if you're going to be using terrible year eight knowledge. Um, so what's the best way of finding out that angle there? The inverse tan of what? The opposite over the adjacent. What's the opposite and the adjacent? Six over 16, because that's the opposite to the angle, and that's the adjacent. So we get the inverse tan of 6 over 16. So let's just do one last thing here. And we get 20.56 degrees. But that's not how we should write the answer. What should we do for a bearing? 0 to 1. So as a bearing, it's 0 to 1 degrees, because you have to round it to a whole number, and it needs to have three digits, OK? Nothing new, just that we can use f equals ma here. So I'm going to do a couple more questions, and then we'll do a short bit of practice. Um, and that's us done on vectors, but then the rest of the topic is a bit more complicated on forces, OK? Which I, I think is more enjoyable than this stuff on vectors anyway. Can I go on to the next page? So we've just got, it says here, three forces act on a particle of mass three kilograms. Find the acceleration of the particle. OK, so the mass is three kilograms. I'm trying to find out what the acceleration is. Now, we know our formula says F equals MA. But I've got three forces. What do I need to do with those three forces, Amina? Add them. Good. So first of all, I'm going to find out what my resultant force is, which is 2, 4 plus minus 5, 4, plus 6, minus 5, which looks like that's 8 minus 5, which is 3, and 8 minus 5, which is 3. I hope I've done that right. Yep, so the resultant force is 3, 3. So now we can say, using this, 3, 3 equals 3, A. So what's the acceleration? 1, 1. OK. So dividing both sides by 3, we get that the acceleration is 1, 1. And it's going to be meters per second squared. The question didn't ask for the magnitude. So you don't need to give the magnitude.
Okay, same process in the next question, apart from the unknown is inside one of the forces. So I always like to jot down what the mass is, so I no longer even really need to read the question. A boat is modelled as a particle of mass 60 kilograms, is being acted on by three forces, F1, F2 and F3. Given that the boat is accelerating at a rate of 0 0.8 minus 1.5, find the values of P and Q. OK, so first of all, the resultant force is 8050 plus 10Q, 20Q plus... Um, I don't know why it's, it shouldn't say 10Q and 20Q here, I've just realised, because it's asking us about P and Q. So let's change this top one, should be 10P. Otherwise that question doesn't make much sense. So we're going to do it like that instead, okay? So it should be 10P on the top and 20Q on the bottom. Um, so, Muhin, I want you to work out what the I part comes to. And then, Faisal, if you can work out what the J part all adds up to as well. Yeah, you got it? So, you get 150 plus 20Q. Uh, yeah. One, no, Careful, because you've got 80 plus 10P minus 75, so don't mix the P and the numbers up. So we're just looking oh, at the top part. Yeah. Oh, I think you've probably just written the wrong number down then. Or maybe I've written the wrong number down. No, I wrote, I wrote it wrong. Yeah. So it's five plus 10P. Get five plus 10P. Okay, so we know that F equals MA, but in this case, our F is this one, the resultant force. So we get five plus 10P. 150 plus 20Q is equal to the mass, which is 60, times by the acceleration, which is 0 0.8 minus 1.5. Nearly there. So that must mean that 5 plus plus 10p is equal to 60 times 0 0.8, just from multiplying these parts out that we've got here. Yeah, I don't know why I'm doing that on my calculator. So we get 5 plus 10p is equal to 48. So 10p is 43. So p is 4.3. And then from the bottom part, from the J part, we get 150 plus 20Q is equal to 60 times minus 1.5. So that's 150 plus 20Q is equal to minus 90. So 20Q is, my brain is so not awake, minus 240. So Q is... <laughs> Minus 12, OK? So you've got your two different values that you've got there, and that should make everything all add up to the way we want it to be, OK? So we're going to just do a short bit of practice, because this is a, a quite a short exercise. Um, I will pick just a couple of questions. I think we should probably do these ones on paper, and then the next set of things we're going to do will be on the boards, OK?